I went undercover at this brand new RV park for two months and I talked to people that RV regularly and what I found to say the least is very eye-opening. Hello Reed Designers and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my first solo video. Over the past two months, I've had the pleasure of speaking to 65 plus people during our stay at the Crooked Oak RV Park in Conway, South Carolina. During that time, we talked about everything RV, likes, dislikes, current trends, you name it, we talked about it. All right, we're gonna dive right into these topics and along the way, I'm gonna share with you my experience or our experience as we've been on the road for the past two years full time. This should really be not a surprise, but kind of a surprise in a way because it's all over RV uh, reviews of, of exactly this, which is annuals. Annuals are a problem. So the folks that I spoke to, there was about, at this group, there was roughly, I'd say 22 women, maybe 14 men, overwhelmingly said they feel when they pull into a park and you have Susie and Johnny here, and then you have, you know, Mo and Larry over here, and you're right in the middle of them both, and they're cooking and they're yelling back and forth. It's almost like you're driving into a neighborhood like an HOA and it's not very comfortable. It's not really welcoming whatsoever. And what they have said a lot is that these groups are very, very clicky. Now, we've had that experience through Thousand Trails and one in particular was Terracea. And as soon as we pulled into that park, we had the first sight as soon as you pulled in the first site, right next door when we opened our door was a door to a lady's home. And it was like that throughout the whole park. So I totally understood that part. I, I understand annuals being an issue. Bob may not agree with me, but we have differences of opinions as far as that one goes. All right, so we do understand that annuals, they, they play a part, they, they pay for I guess the down, I would say the downtime when the parks aren't so full because they are there all the time. Again, time and place, but again, rules. People also felt like they didn't have to adhere to the rules that other people have, which we noticed at the Thousand Trails parks as well. And have you had any bad experiences dealing with annuals? If so, put them in the comments below. I can hear the tapping right away. I can already hear it. PSA from me to you, never ever interrupt a pickleball game. There were six couples that were playing and I popped in and went, oh, hey, and that didn't go over well, but that's a conversation for another time. But overwhelmingly in our conversation, they said that bingo of all things isn't hip anymore. Um, the demographic for full-time RVers are less and less, so it used to be at retirement age, you were going out, living your full-time life. Well, the age is getting less and less now where I feel in my 50s that I'm the oldest person that's out there. Like, it's my age group now and younger. Now, don't get me wrong. I like me a good game of bingo, but apparently that's gone out of the days. So, for instance, when we were at Splash uh, RV Resort in Milton, Florida, they have sports they have karaoke, and you don't want to hear me sing because Bob always says I couldn't carry a tune if it has handles, and he's probably right. But they have so many other offerings there um, that bingo is just, it's in the past. All right, and this is a great segue into this next one that it was just incredible, the response I got out of this one, was life doesn't just happen on the weekends. There's a lot of folks, a lot of folks like us that work on the weekends and they have nothing to do Monday through Thursday. They're looking for some sort of variety. Now, Fort Wilderness, they do an amazing job with that. And that's just not weekends and holidays. But what do you think? What, are, what do you think when you pull into an RV resort, like the word resort, 
what do you feel? What are you expecting when you're there? Are you expecting just weekend or holiday entertainment or are you expecting something, something each and every day? Let me know in the comments. So I can't count the number of times that we have pulled into an RV spot and noticed that the sewer hose is 45 feet away from you. Like really, and, and during my conversations with people, this was the most talked about um, from a lot of the men that RV parks are designed by investors and not RVers. They don't know. You know, they have you all facing the wrong way, so everybody's in the sun. You open your door and, oh look, there's the proverbial poop hose, and oh look, to your right, you have a, a, a fire pit there that, you know, you open your door and it's gonna like singe your eyebrows off, for instance. So here at Crooked Oaks, it was a perfect example of the company actually listening to RVers. When, in the original plans, there were no, there was no laundromat here. You had to go down the road and it wasn't a very favorable place to begin with. And then they had um, the bathhouses. The bathhouses had no air conditioning. So the day before we left, they had everybody there putting in AC for those bathhouses. Like it's just, it's common sense to most like us because we do it all the time, but not so much for the investors that see a piece of land and they go, ooh, we're gonna drop a campground right here without knowing their people or anything about what they're doing. So tell me in the comments below, am I being crazy? Is it just, oh well, we'll take it as it is? Or is there something that, you know, that you've learned about this as well and you kind of agree with me? Now I'm going to step right in and interrupt Carrie's solo video premiere debut with a word from our sponsor, Max Jock. Without Max Jock, this video would not be possible, nor would the constant lack of motion be a thing in our RV. Anybody with a dual axle RV knows that as soon as you level out, you are swaying all over the place unless you have something in between those two axles that stop that motion. You know, the motion that everybody thinks you're doing something when you shouldn't be doing. We've had the pleasure of using this Max Chalk system for about three weeks now, and this has outperformed every single set of X style chocks that we have used hands down. I'm gonna show you what's inside this case. Not only is it a heavy duty case that holds everything, but we're gonna pop this open and inside you're gonna see you have the instructions. But look at this. You have something that's totally different from anything else that's on the market. These have what's called a drill drive. And what this does is that it allows you to attach a socket to the drill for easy, simple installation. You don't have a drill with you, that's okay. They've got you covered as well because they have a manual socket, but this is a larger footprint than most. And again, that simple way of just attaching to the drill, and they actually were smart, and they put that system right here in the middle. There's no more reaching up top, cutting up your arms on your RV skirting just to get that chalk in there. This is so simple, in fact, I've even convinced Carrie to take over from here. She's gonna show you how this install goes and you are gonna be one step closer to having it the most stable environment out of your dual axle RV. All right, so for the sake of time, I've already started this and I have the socket on the drill already. So let's see how easy this actually is. Wow, and just like that, there's no more bouncy bouncy. All right, and as you can see from Carrie's excellent installation, these will fit any style tandem axle RV, anywhere from three and a half to 11 and a half opening between those tires. Okay, and these are also rust resistant. They're made of a heavy gauge steel with a zinc plating to make sure that there's no rust in your way and nothing is stopping you from being stable. This takes care of the sway the easy way. Check out the video description. There'll be a link below. You can buy these on Amazon. Highly, highly recommended above all the competitors. Now, back to Carrie's video. This is a special shout out to Tony and Alicia. I talked to this couple for hours and they, I had to promise them that I would make it a point in this video to say this. What's up with the fees? You have a fee for an early check-in. You have a fee for a late checkout. 
you have a fee to lock in at your site, even though you have a reservation. I don't know. To me, the fees are kind of getting out of control. And Tony and Alicia, they, they think the same thing. As promised, Tony and Alicia, I put this in here and hopefully somebody will listen and somebody will go, hey, Tony and Alicia from Trenton, New Jersey, you are right and we're gonna take those fees away. All right, people, this is where I'm asking for your help here. As you can see, this is my first solo video. I think I'm doing all right. What do you guys think? Give me a thumbs up, a comment, but a nice comment. If you have nothing nice to say, just a thumbs up would be great. So now let's get into the next one. So while I had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people during those two months, I also had a chance to talk to the park staff. And I have found that the park staff is kind of underrated. And a few people have said this as well, just because you just assume that you work there, you're supposed to get, you know, you're supposed to treat them with, you know, roll out the red carpet. But these people, I mean, they pick up your trash, they answer your questions, they bring you ice, they bring you firewood. And did you know that they get yelled at because it rained outside? Like, come on, like that's, that's pretty crappy, literally. Not to mention that they pick up that too. Uh-uh. If you have an experience that you've had an over the top staff at a, a park or resort anywhere that you wanna name them below, Please, by all means, put them in the comments. We'll give them a shout out in a later video. Okay, so for this last one, I asked Bob to join me here because I had such a hard time and it hurt my heart so much to hear what these full-time people were saying. And overwhelmingly, every single person that I spoke to couldn't understand why they're hearing everywhere, everywhere on social media that RVs are made like trash. Now, here's something that we've been trying to say since the beginning of our journey. If you've ever watched any of our videos, uh, we can come across as being, uh, what's the words that we've been hearing? Pompous, uh, jerks. we're jerks, uh, <laughs> we're just terrible people because we just share our honest feelings with things. And this one here in particular is one that, well, as you go back over the timeline of YouTube in general, first during the pandemic years, it was everything is great and yeah. RV life is solve every single problem that you have. And everybody needs to get out there and do it. All of these, these monumental places that you have to go to. And then when the click started slowing down on that and the economy started coming back down, everybody said, well, wait a minute, everybody's quitting RV life, so you need to get out now. And uh, well, as we've proven uh, last year, that's just not true. And now Aww. this newest thing is the economy continues to downgrade and everybody else is feeling that pinch. Big money is all about RVs are trash and this lifestyle is just horrendous because well, that is what's getting all the clicks on YouTube. And the problem with that is, is Carrie has spoken to, and she showed me these notes and she would come in day in and day out going, I feel so bad for this couple that just started and they're turning on YouTube and seeing these stories that everything is falling apart. And we're not experiencing that. And when we say this out to our audience, we're told, well, that's because you have a big corporate sponsor in, in these grand design and all this other stuff. We don't. It's not we true. just simply are living a average lifestyle that is not over sensationalized to meet a sponsor or to meet a narrative. We also have an income on the backside of everything that we don't need to do YouTube for money. We do it because it's fun and it's actually become a thing where people depend on what we put out weekly. Do we make money on YouTube? Absolutely. Yes. And that's probably one of the biggest indicators that we keep doing it. Uh, but we're also not going to trade our values for more money because, well, at a certain point, you reach a point where you just don't need to do things like that. You can just be honest and present your information out there. I think what Carrie's covered in this video is actually a good eye-opener to what a lot of people are seeing on the road that is just the ups and downs, the different perceptions of what this lifestyle is. If you just imagine starting over today in 2024, hitting the road full time and seeing the nonsense that's all over social media because it generates clicks. Yep. On the last, what were you telling me when you started this video that how many people were doing full time living? <laughs> A million, one million people are out there full time living. 
right? Above yeah. and beyond that, there, additionally, there is 40 million people who have RVs and RV regularly. And, and, and to hear that, you know, people trashing this light, it just, it made me sad. Like, and honestly, it made me very mad. <laughs> and the last part of data that Carrie and I had pulled was that 2024, 2025, and going yeah. into 2026 is projected to be some of the biggest sales in RV units. It's expected to triple in 2026. An all time high. So of course you're going to see this now. We're not unsympathetic to people who have had issues with their RV. We understand that it does happen, but in comparison to units sold, it is very minor to have the issues that are being heavily dramatized all over YouTube. Definitely. And I think that was a great point. And, and Gary, I think you did for your first video. I think you took on a tough well, assignment. I'm telling you right now, I couldn't have finished this one without you. So thank you because how, if I said what I wanted to say, how I wanted to say it, he wouldn't have edited it and put it up. <laughs> we are huge advocates for this it's, lifestyle. And if you take anything away from any of our videos is that if you want to do this type of thing and you want to live this type of way, you can do it without fear that everything's going to fall apart and you're going to go bankrupt inside of three months. And it's all about research. You research the, the heck out of it. And at the end of the day, you do what's best for you, not what somebody on YouTube or Instagram or lose. Facebook says. On that note, we're going to close yes. it out here. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>